This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Greenlands. But before that, this video is brought to you by Evil Reg and Robert L. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Greenlands map can be found over the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. As of the 1.0 release of this map, it is indeed available for all platforms. So let's read a little bit of the description. It says, Welcome to Greenlands. I have converted this map over from Farm Sim 19 and made a few improvements. This is a fictional map inspired by real-life farms set in the UK. The map has a total of 100 fields ranging in different shapes and sizes. There is a village called Greenlands. The map also includes a biogas plant, grain mill, sawmill, storage yards with sheds, and a long river with several forested areas and a large area at the bottom of the map that you can do anything you want with. So think about No Man's Land. That is basically what you have in the lower one-third of the entire map. The map has contracts on all 100 fields. Animal husbandry is built into the placeables and can be sold along with the sheds at the main farm. Gates can also be sold off as a whole by clicking on any gate. And the hedges on the map can be sold by clicking one of the red bollards opposite the main farmhouse. There are three main farms on the map, which are the Greenlands Farm, which is cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, grain storage, and three silage pits along with storage sheds. Greenside farm, which is cow, sheep, and two silage pits. Roadside farm, which includes pigs and grain storage. And Woodview farm is kind of a tertiary, fourthiary, whatever the term is for that, farm that includes a storage yard with two sheds. Let's go ahead and jump on in. We're going to activate all the mods we typically use when we take a look at these maps. We'll pull up the log, and I'll tell you that while the map is loading up, I did load this map up in farm manager mode. When you do that, the main farm is built out exactly how you're going to see it here, except there is no machinery, and you do not own any land at the start. We are, of course, starting up this mode, or map view. We are starting up this map video, sorry, in new farmer mode, and that is basically what you are going to be seeing here. And I can tell you for the very first time that if you load this map up in farm manager mode and you're on console, it will be consuming 882 slots. And if you load this map up on new farmer mode on console, it should be consuming 1,088 slots, as you see right here. So let's go ahead and pull up the PDA. We take a look. We have all of the in-game crops available to us here on Farm Sim 22. And if we take a look at the lands area, you'll see that we have the main farm, which is 17.48 acres in size, $849,000 to buy. So if you start on Farm Manager, you have your $1.5 million. You're going to be dropping a good chunk of change to pick up the main farm here. You also own Fields 42, which is $87,000, $88,000. Field 43, which is $258,000. Field 61, which is $80,760. Field 75, which is $149,000. And Field 58, which is $83,376. Also happen to own the biogas plant at the start, which is $268,000. As far as the other farms go, we have a farm up here to the north that includes Fields 15 and 16. That is viable for $279,000. We have a farm down here to the south that includes fields 93, 94, and 95. It can be bought for $363,000. We have the storage yard farm up here to the north that includes fields 9 and 24. That can be bought for $261,000. You can buy the entire road network, which also includes the town area and one of our few of the sell points that can be bought for five or sorry, $54,000. If we take a look at the plots down here in the lower third of the map, we have a small plot down here that includes a old rundown barn. We will take a closer look at that during the fly around that can be bought for $27,000. We have another plot here that can be bought for $47,000. And then we have a large 
plot down here to the south. 80 acres in size, $388,000. Then we have four other large plots down here to the south. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. So this mod is going to help us identify how large each particular field is. We're not really concerned with the amount of lime fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, etc., that we can use on these fields. But what we are concerned with is seeing the map number or the field number and the size in hectares that each of these happen to be. So here we have fields 42, 43, 56, 58, 61, 60, and 76. Those are all fields that we own at the start. But I'm just going to kind of scroll through this list. And if you're interested in looking and seeing which field has what particular size, you can go ahead and do that now. This is a pretty long list, so we're not going to spend too much time on this segment. I have seen field sizes that go up to, I believe, six, six and a half hectares was, I think, the largest field size that I've seen. Then I've seen some fields that are down here, like field 93, that are in the 0.5 size. Let's just also jump to our lease farmland screen and the reason i like to use this screen is one it's going to show us the farmland id which does not necessarily represent the field but what it shows us is one what farmlands are viable plots of lands include fields and what plots of land do not include fields this would happen probably to be the biogas plant and then also shows us if there is a field or fields associated with that plot of land how big the plot of land is and how much money it's going to cost us to buy that plot of land. So farm ID one is the main starting farm. And again, we're just going to kind of scroll down through this list so you can kind of see the various farm IDs, which fields that they are associated with and how much they are going to cost and what size they are. Again, if there's anything in particular you want to look at, you just pause the video when I get to the appropriate point and you can get a closer look. So here we have some of those viable plots of land that are likely down toward the south that do not have any particular farm IDs associated or fields associated with those. And let's go ahead and check out our crop counter. We have the base game crop counter available to us here on Greenlands. We go on to our prices screen. You will see that we can indeed sell every single base game crop that we can grow on the map, which is really good to see. We even have the ability to sell sugar beet cut at both Freelands auction center bales and the biogas plant. We have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk also, as well as wood chip, silage, hay straw, and grass. We take a look at our base game production items. Even though there are only six production items built into the map, you can see that we can indeed sell every single base game production item on the map, which is also really good to see. So it's going to give the player the ultimate in flexibility without having to go and resort to an additional mod. Now, this map also includes the, well, I'll leave it up to you to decide if it's an amazing or if it's a crutch, but we have the rock crusher that takes rocks and four folds it and increases it into lime that is built into the map if you don't like it you can sell it so you don't have to use it but it is available and that's why you see such a big major price with respect to selling lime we also have the stone crusher again it is that one to four lime or stone to lime plant that is built into the map if you don't want it you can sell it that is definitely the case. Let's move on down to our farmland vehicles. And we start out with a fairly good list of starting machinery. Some low hours on the stuff that does have hours on it. It's all well maintained. So it's all going to have a decent resale value on it. None of it is leased. So you don't have to worry about leasing costs. We do start out with a decent list of animal pins. We do not have any animals at the start. We do have contracts available on the map. And we start out by owning. The lime crusher, like I said, the rock crusher, that takes 1,000 units of rocks and makes 4,000 units of lime. And then we also own the biogas plant at the start. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting equipment. We start out with 
the Fent Fabret 515C and the Massey Ferguson 3709AL small tractors. We had the Landini, the great Landini 7230 Robo 6 and the John Deere 7810 medium tractors. And we have the John Deere T560 Harvester that is paired up with the 625X Rain Header. And then we have the Nardi N40BX Rain Header Trailer. We have a 1986 pickup truck. We have the Kloss Karat 140TD trailer. We have the Diggleman Signature 7200 Stone Collector. We have the Ecomat Plow. We have the Joker 4CT Discaro. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200 Fertilized Spreader. The Manure Director 14 Manure Spreader. The Farm Tech 800 Slurry Tank Spreader. We have the Coon Butterfly and Front Mowers and the GMD 8730FF and the GMD 3123F Mowers. We have the GF8712 Tether. The Semez Z2848H Wind Rower. The Faro 4010D Pottinger Forage Wagon. The BB3190 Round Baler. Then we have the ProChop 150 Bale Shredder. We have the Dusseldorf MSS3000 Leveler. We have the Quickie Q7M front loader. Then for front loader tools, we have a pallet fork, bucket, and bale spike. Then we have to round it all out a 1500 kilogram and 650 kilogram front weight. Wow, that was quite the list of starting equipment. Now let's go ahead and before we do the farm tour, let's take a look at the build mode because I want to show you a couple things. I want to show you these red bollards that are right here at the farmhouse. This farmhouse does not have a sleep trigger. You can put your own down so you don't have to worry about if you want to buy this farm, if you want to work on some other farm, you can put the sleep trigger down where you want to put it down. But if we come up here and go to demolish and we click on this red post, do we want to sell all the hedges on the map for $25? Yes or no? If we do, all of the hedges everywhere go away. And this map looks drastically different. Let's load it up, click on it, see what you think. I don't like the map without hedges. I'm not going to show it to you, but it's there available for you. These hedges don't have collisions anyway, so they're just visual. So if you don't like seeing them, you can get rid of them. But you don't need to get rid of them in order to get rid of the collisions because there aren't any. If you click on any gate, absolutely any gate on the map, you're going to get the, do you want to sell all gates on the map for $6,000? If you don't like gates, if you can't stand gates, well, just click on this, sell it for six grand, and they're gone. The only gates that may remain are these gates here that are tied to this custom animal area. Because when I click on those, it basically asks me if I want to delete this whole cow shed, which, of course, I do not want to at the moment. Now, as far as farm customizations go, you can pretty much delete everything on this farm with the exception of the farmhouse, the storage container, this little section of gate right here of fencing, which stays, and a couple decorative bits over here. You can pretty much delete everything else that is on the main farm. Now, that is not the same at all the other farms. At the other farms, there is a combination of sheds that are permanently on the map. So you can't totally customize all of the other farms. So with respect to can the farms be customized on the map, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point because you can delete a lot of the buildings on a lot of the other farms, but you can't delete all of them. You can pretty much delete all of the buildings here other than a few ancillary decorative bits, which really don't seem to go and be too much in the way. So right here at the main farmhouse, like I said, there is no sleep trigger at the main farmhouse. And let's just jump back real fast and just look. We do have some custom sheds that we can put down, which is good to see. they will rotate 360 degrees. We have a custom silage bunker that is covered that we can buy and put down. 
We do have a sleep trigger that we could put down. So if we wanted to place a sleep trigger, we could. I like that it is not placed, so we can pretty much put it down wherever we want it. So that's cool to see. Here is the rock crusher that I mentioned that is built into the map. You can sell it, and you can indeed put another one down, should you so wish. We have a fast food restaurant that we can put down as far as the sell point, as well as the base game fast food restaurant, which is kind of interesting. And it looks like the animal areas are good to go. Decorative bits. And as far as landscape painting, ground painting, we have all of the standard ground textures available to us in the other base game maps. So here we have the chicken area. So we have our food trough. We have our chicken pie point. 30 chickens in this outdoor coop. Then we have our egg spawn point. We have a fuel trailer located right here. Starts with no fuel in it. We have a workshop trigger. We can indeed sell this whole workshop building if we wish. So the trigger is inside of the shed here. We have our animal area. So we have our milk spawn point. We have our cow buy point right here. 80 cows in this particular area. is pretty much a mostly base game cow area so we have our food trough in here we're going to come in here to blow our straw we have our slurry point i like how this has been indeed customized so we have these gates we can come in here if we want to and everything pretty nifty there Over here we have one of those covered silage bunkers, or a couple of those covered silage bunkers. Now right there. This is the automatic feeding building, so here is where we're going to put our food if we wish to make use of the automatic feeding robot. And then we have a manure pit that is tied to this particular cow area. more machinery we have then a sheep area so we have our food trough we have our sheep spawn point we have our wool point over here on the side and again i like like this customization where we have a gate to get back in here to our sheep area Right beside the sheep area, we have our pig area. So we have our slurry. We have our manure that is tied to the sheep or the pig area. But take a look. So if you wanted to auto load, if you will, your manure, you'd have to drive in here into the sheep area to get to that trigger. Or of course you could pull manure out with a bucket right there. We have our food trough, our food trigger for our pigs, and then our pig buy trigger. 270 pigs in the large pig building. We have an open silage bunker right there, three-sided. And then storage buildings all around the main farm here. And like I said, all of these buildings can be sold, but little, little decorative bits like this here they remain if you happen to sell these buildings we have our farm silo located right here on the this side of the tree line with our dump and fill pipe and more of our storage and that is pretty much the main farm here on greenland so i'm going to go ahead and get set up for the fly around, we're going to fly around the map and take a look at some of these other farms from a from an overview level. 
And then we are going to go back to the shop, get in our Mahindra, drive around to all farms, drive around to the cell points, and just get a good feel for the map, kind of from the ground level. The one thing you're going to notice right out of the gate, this map has a lot of terrain changes. I would say the lowest part of the map is down here where the river cuts across. Let's go ahead and pull up the PDA so you can see the river basically cuts the map not so much in half, but I would say I would say maybe three-fifths from the bottom of the map, you have this river that cuts it all the way across. The southern part of the map is flatter than the northern part of the map, but overall the map on both sides kind of comes down toward the river. We do have an interesting thing down here. We have a bridge that's going to allow you to come over here to grass field 40. And on the bridge, we actually have a water trigger. So I want to talk about that and mention that and kind of give some props to the map author for basically putting a water trigger on the bridge and having that marked. In fact, if we talk about having trigger and player interactive areas clearly marked on the map. I'm going to give the map a full point on that score because everything does seem to be clearly marked as best I can tell in my kind of cursory look on the map, but also the fact that these added a sleep trigger to that bridge for you to pull water out. That's a really cool aspect. But you can see how this river kind of cuts through this this forested area, we've got a road that's coming up through that forested area, and now we are kind of in the northern part of the map where it really, really starts to get a bit more hilly. This, I believe, is technically the Wood View Farm. This building, this farm has a storage yard with a couple sheds. None of these buildings can be customized. These buildings are permanently here. I bought the land, I tried to delete them. They don't go away, so... There's that, but you do have a nice kind of additional chunk here if you want to put some production down or other sheds or maybe a small animal area. You could do that without too much hassle. Let's go ahead and make our way across to what I think is Green Side Farm, which is listed as farm number two on the, on the map description. Again, just take a look at all of these hedges that you can see across the map. And when you delete the hedges, the map looks totally different. Yes, it makes merging fields incredibly easy because there is nothing visually between the fields. But man, it really, really changes the looks of the map. And uh, it, it doesn't change the looks for the better, in my opinion. But of course, your opinion may differ, and that's, that's perfectly fine. I definitely would say if you delete the hedges, you need to delete the fences because, or the gates, because the gates look really weird. <laughs> the gates look really weird just out in the middle of nowhere when there aren't any hedges to uh, to be on either side of it. So I was mistaken. I think this is actually the um, roadside farm because this has pigs, whereas greenside farm has cows and sheep. So this is roadside farm up here to the north. We're going to follow the road down here toward the south, cross the bridge once again across the river. And this is kind of the town area. We have our grain mill. So let's talk about our production. We really haven't talked about the production available on the map. There are six built-in production areas. We have a sawmill. We have a action center wool, which is the spinnery. We have carpentry, rock crusher, lime plant which we already talked about, the biogas plant and the grain mill, which is located right here. We have another covered silage bunker located right down there. That is on buyable land, so we can buy that land and use that as silage bunker. Here we have our animal trigger, our animal dealer. And then right off the animal dealer, we have the spinnery, or also known as the auction center wool, facility and we're going to talk about this in a little bit detail once we get around to the drive around we also have a bail cell point 
we're going to see what this is. I think this is going to be a buy point for liquid fertilizer and possibly herbicide. And then I think we also have a water trigger located right there. As we progress through town, we have a few cell points to talk about. We have our fuel, we have our restaurant, and our grocery located all right here. Our carpentry is located just down the road there, but before we talk about the carpentry, I want to talk a little bit about this stretch of road. And I'm not, we're not taking any points off for this, but I just want to point it out because it just, it just looks a little weird, in my opinion. These buildings, they have a little bit of a, a metallic sheen to them. Especially if you get up here real close to them. They get a real kind of metallic, maybe a coppery sheen to them. Especially on the windows. So I think maybe this was a byproduct of the FS19 to 22 conversion. I don't really know anything about texturing or anything like that. So I'm just mentioning they look a little weird. And, uh, and all that. But uh, overall, we didn't knock any points off with respect to that aspect. So we have our shop located right here. Our shop trigger, our customized cell repair trigger, and a pretty decent yard here for machinery to spawn in at. We quickly make our way. So there is the starting farm. And here is our main driveway for the starting farm. Greenlands Farm. You can kind of see the domed roofs of the biogas plant off in the distance on the left. And then we have Greenside Farm over here on our right. Let's hit the biogas plant first real fast. We have a sawmill just beyond that. So we have the biogas plant. We have a biogas plant sell point. We have four silage bunkers that we can sell if we want to. And then we also then have the stone crusher lime factory located right here. Again, if you don't want to use this, you can sell it, which I like that idea. I think it's a little bit overpowered. I think it completely breaks the game economy with how much lime it produces and how much you could sell lime for. So if I were to play on the map, I would likely remove that personally and maybe put down the standard stone crusher. So here we have the sawmill. And I think on, I think possibly on FS19, the map ended here at this point. That the all the area off there to the south, I don't think that existed. I think maybe that was... I don't know what that was. I think it was just out of bounds. I don't think we really had the ability to play over there. At least I don't remember having that ability. So here we have Greenside Farm. We have our cow area. We have our sheep area. We have the ability to get rid of the manure pit. We have the ability to get rid of, I think, these silage buildings. Yeah, we have the ability to get rid of these silage buildings. But this shed back here, we don't have the ability to get rid of this shed at all. And we don't have the ability to get rid of this shed here. And the farmhouse remains. But again, we have a placeable sleep trigger that we could put down. So again, we could only partially get rid of the, the buildings on these secondary farms. I'll talk about the roadside farm with the pigs. When we get back up there on the drive around as to what we can and can't sell up there. We do have a pretty decent hillside here because this part of the map is significantly lower than the other portion. But you can see that overall this is quite expansive, quite flat, and could easily, you can easily make your own map play area down here and only go into town and up the BGA and around the other fields for contract work if you wanted to because this is a whole this is a third of a map some maps are basically this big 
this bottom section. So I really like this. It kind of makes this map a map for a lot of players. I don't know if I'd say all players, but it makes this map a map for a lot of players. There's two ways down into this area. There is the road here off of the town. You've got the church in the distance. We have our carpentry shop here. And then there is another road that extends beyond the animal dealer through these trees to get down into here. This is that small plot of land that you could buy and you can sell the, sh the, uh, the building. You can sell the fence. You can sell the gate here and completely change how this all looks. So I really like this really cool, interesting aspect. This is Greenland's wild space. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right, let's go ahead and quickly make our way over to the shop. That's where we're going to get our Mahindra and do our drive around through the various cell points. And we'll make our way up to the main farm, or not the main farm, but the secondary farm to the north. We have our shop trigger. Taylor's Agricultural Engineers. Oh, I got turned around. We have our customized repair, tell, sell, and trade trigger marked right there. And then we have a very large, expansive area for our machinery to spawn in at. I think to, um, we're going to be doubling back no matter what. So let's go to our left. We'll check everything out in town. Here we are coming into Greenlands. Of course, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Because, well, that's the way traffic works. So in here we have our grocery cell point. Around the back we have our restaurant cell point. And these are some really, really narrow confines. I mean, yeah, you're gonna be coming through here with little trailers. Don't, don't even try. Don't even try to come in here with a semi-trailer. You're gonna be, you're gonna be frustrated and angry. So here we have our fuel point, J&M's fuel station. Greenland's grain mill. So we have our dump station, our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive trigger right there. We do have a fair bit of room to drive around the grain mill. That's good to see. But man, we got some really, really amazing sight lines. We can see all the way off to the northern edge, the northern tree boundary. So let's go this direction. We have the pair of sheds and the covered silage bunker that I mentioned right there on that side coming down here to the animal dealer Greenland's auction center so we have our animal dealer located right here Auction center bale cell point located right there. Then over here, this is the basically the spinnery because we can buy the Greenland's auction center wool for sixty thousand dollars. So we have our fabric spawn point right there, and then we have our wool 
drop off right here. Now let's check the PDA to see what these other triggers might be listed at. So we have a water trigger there and then a Greenland's Auction Center Milk. Okay, so that is a milk buy point. Let's go in cab view and drive down here to the Greenland's Wildlands area. Kind of a fun little name, I think, for this. Again, these hedges have no collisions whatsoever. You can get rid of them if you want to, but other than visually changing how the map looks, other than giving you a really easy way to merge, oh my god, you can pretty much merge most of these fields into massive, massive fields if you really wanted to once you got rid of the hedges, so... This will take us down here to you know, the old rundown farm barn here. We have our mostly flat wildlands that we took a look at during the fly around. is going to dump us off over here at the carpentry production. That is located right there. And I said we're Gonna have to do a little bit of a double back. But I'd be interested to know from anybody what makes this, uh, it's making that kind of copper glow to those windows. Maybe a, maybe a shader. Shader mix up, it's hard to tell. We have the main entrance into our farm. Got a long lane into our farm. Now, while I said the southern part of the map here, where we have the fields at, is is and feels much flatter than the northern part of the map. It still isn't isn't flat, right? We're not saying it's flat, we're just saying that it's not near as rolling hilled as its northern counterpart above the river. And welcome to a Greenside Farm. All your fabulous farming needs in the south of Greenlands. A permanent farmhouse, but we can put the sleep trigger down if we're playing in multiplayer and we are playing on this farm, or if we're playing in single player and this is the farm we decide to set up at, we do have a small fuel tank. And we have this building, which is permanently embedded on the map. We do have the make use do have the ability to make use of it. Pretty narrow confines to get into it, so you don't want a super big machinery. And then we have these could be used as sheds, but they are actually silage bunkers we have silage triggers there we have our milk point for our cows we have then 45 cows we can put in this particular building then we have our food trough and our straw point of course our slurry trigger and our manure heap for our cows. Our sheep building is located right here. 
65 sheep, and this one has been textured green. I like seeing that. We have our food dump, and then our wool spawn point. Now, with respect to the buildings using the new texture technique and the ground textures, I'm gonna go and give the map a three quarters of a point. I have a really hard time trying to figure out if those buildings along the main road there that I mentioned that kind of have a metallic sheen to them, I have a really hard time of telling if those are using the new textures or not. If I, if I err on the side of caution and say that they are using the new textures, there's still various other buildings around that are not. I don't feel that they are. Um, but there aren't a whole lot of really bad low texture buildings. So I don't, I don't think the map needs to have that much taken off for that. But there are some lower quality, lower textured barns and other sheds kind of scattered around. So we're going to give the map a three quarters of a point. Ideally, in order to kind of get a full point on that, we're going to have buildings that are using the new technique for the most part, or buildings that don't really deter from the overall look of the map and experience of the map by getting up a little bit closer to them, and then you're like, oh, these are a little older. So here we have the lime and stone production. Again, you could sell that if you want, if you don't like kind of having this, in my personal opinion, overpowered OP um, lime production and lime cell ability. We have these four bunkers, which we can delete if we want. And we have a grain cell point down here at the biogas plant. And then this is the standard 500 kilowatt hour biogas plant. So we have our digestate or I digester dump. We have our slurry dump trigger. We have our digestate fill point right there. Then we have another digestate fill point located right there. Now up the hill and around the bend to the sawmill. So we have our log cell trigger. We have our pallet spawn point for our planks. We have our dump station right there. This looks like it's a, is this like a, this almost looks like a, a, a wood chip spawn point here, which is kind of interesting. So we have an interactive icon there at the door. We have our log dump, we have our log cell, and then here we have a wood chip cell point. And let's just go in cap so we can drive kind of down through this wooded area, down toward the river, then over the river, and then up on the other side. Lots of forestry available on the map, should you be into that kind of thing. That is for sure. I like how we've got a fair bit of forestry over here right by the sawmill for convenience. Coming across the river and what I feel is the, the hillier side of the map. It's the northern side of the map. Here we have Woodview Farm. This is that non-customizable kind of storage yard farm. Man, I looked and I think this is maybe one of those, these white houses I think are some of those buildings that are 
kind of residual from FS19. And then we have a decorative area oops, over here. Like in FS19, I was kind of thinking this area to the left is also associated with the uh, our tree view farm. And then as we make our way up here to the final area that we're gonna talk about, let's do a little summary of our points. So we've got production built in. We have six different production items. We have a sawmill, we have the spinnery, basic labels, action, or sorry, auction, center wool, carpentry, rock crusher, lime plant, biogas, and grain mill. So the map's gonna get a full point on regard to having production built in. Our area is set aside for that. We've got the entire southern third of the map that you could do anything else you wanted to with, really. Then we have include sell point, include sell points for all the base game crops, animal production, and 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 base game production, yeah, crops and animal outputs. We're gonna give the map a full point on that regard. Can the farms be customized? We gave the map at three quarters of a point because there are buildings that cannot be removed, like this particular building cannot be removed. We have a fuel station. This building here cannot be removed. It is permanent up here at this farm. We can remove all the FS-22 structures, so we can remove the manure heap. We can remove the pig area here and the silo. This shed we can get rid of, but we can't get rid of that building that we're looking at. We can't get rid of that building either down here. So we did give the map three quarters of a point because while we can sell 99% of the stuff at the main farm, and I would have given it a pass for the things that we couldn't sell there. There are other things up here at these other areas that should you decide you want to play up here, you can get rid of some stuff, but other stuff you're going to have to work around. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. We're going to give the map three quarters of a point on that regard. Most of the buildings don't really deter from the visual aspect of the visual enjoyment of the map. There are a few little interesting caveats here and there. Some buildings kind of using some of the lower textures that be nice if they could be maybe in an update re-textured. But overall, it doesn't deter that much. So again, we're going to go with three quarters of a point. And the player interactive areas being clearly marked. I think they are for the most part. It's a little bit of confusion over at the sawmill. But I don't think that's enough confusion to really knock anything off. So overall, the map is going to get a four and a half out of five. Still a very honorable score. And quite frankly, I was hoping, I was hoping to give this map a five. I was hope, I hope to give every map a five. I love to start out. I start out hoping that every map is going to be a five. But no, alas, not every map can make a five. This one is close, four and a half out of five. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the map. So we have our silo here. And the pig farm. So again, this is just a base game pig area. We have our slurry. We have our manure heap. That is an add-on. We have our food drop. And then we have our pig area here. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about with this pig area and the pig area at the main farm is, is are you going to be able to get in here and hit the food trigger with this manure pile located right here? You could move this. You could definitely move this. You get rid of the tree, you could slide this down a little bit more and give yourself some room by basically selling it and putting it back down. But it just it just feels a little tight. I assume it was play tested in that you could indeed get to those triggers without too many issue. But it's just something I'm a little cautious about with respect to that without really trying it myself. So overall, the food for the pigs and all the other animal areas, they all look to be fairly standard. We're not seeing any custom food needs on this particular map. There you go, guys. That is Greenlands. Let me know, like I said, down in the comments below, what do you think of this particular map? I think it'd be a really fun map for multiplayer because, well, there are a ton of fields. There are basically five playable areas on the map. We have the main farm. We have this farm up here to the north. We have another small farm over here to the northeast. So that's three. We have a farm down kind of toward the south east of the map. So that's four. And then we have the entire bottom section 
that is five. Really, the entire bottom section could be three or four playable areas because it is divided up into five distinct viable zones. And until next time, happy farming. <laughs>